that's our whole day. I'm going to lag. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. No. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, you please, uh, your, your video is off, ma'am. वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन रेस्पेक्टेड प्रिंसिपल of Gorgon College Dr Sagar Sasi Mohanto sir IQC coordinator Dr Surajit Saikya distinguished speakers esteemed colleagues and participants from across the state I on behalf of the department of English Gorgon College welcome you all to the one day national webinar on trends in contemporary indian women's writing in english organized by the department of english in collaboration with IQC Gorgon College We feel honored to have two distinguished speakers for the one day national webinar. I also welcome our esteemed speakers of the day, Mrs. Anmona Bora, Madam, former associate professor and vice principal of JB College, Jorhat, and Dr. Indu Swami, assistant professor in the Department of English, Assam University, Diffu Campus. The Department of English has been organizing various activities since 2010 it has organized one national seminar one international webinar four popular talks and many publications by the faculties of english department this has helped in the overall development of the department of english today's webinar trends in contemporary indian women's writing in english has been organized to explore the various trends in indian writings in english now it's time to inaugurate the webinar i request our respected principal dr sarvasasi mohanta sir to inaugurate the session and to deliver his inaugural speech thank you <clears throat> thank you very good morning to you all respected dr rasmi rekha swakya HOD of the Department of English, Gorgaon College, also the coordinator of the webinar, co-coordinator of the coordinator uh, webinar, Professor Shamolima Swakya, coordinator of the IQSC Gorgaon College, Dr. Surajit Swakya. Today's resource person, our respected Dr. Anmona Bora, former HOD and associate professor in the Department of English, JB College. She was also the vice principal of the JB College. Dr. Indu Swami, Assistant Professor in the Department of English, Assam University, Diffu Campus. Uh, our respected faculty members from Gorgaon College and various other colleges and universities, research scholars, and my dear students. I, on behalf of the Gorgaon College fraternity, would like to welcome you all to the webinar uh, organized by the Department of English in collaboration with IQSC Gorgaon College. titled trends in contemporary indian women writing in english as our uh, hod 
Department of English, Gorgon College, Dr. Rosmi Rekha Hoikya has already told you that the Gorgon College has, has been trying to continue with the academic practice, continue with the uh, continue with various scholastic and non-scholastic activities even during the pandemic period through virtual platform. This is also an endeavor on part of the Department of English, Gorgon College, to organize the national webinar on trends in contemporary Indian women writings in English. In this regard, I would like to appreciate, I, I, I highly appreciate the initiative taken by the Department of English. And I'm also delighted to welcome our respected resource person, Dr. Uh, Professor Anmona Bora, who is uh, actually, uh, we, uh, I know her since my childhood. She is my <laughs> eld <laughs> elder sister. Actually, we grown together in the uh, college, Sipsagar College campus on the bank of historic tank, uh, Zoysagar tank. Uh, so uh, I have a, a very, actually, Amar Gurwa Homporko, as it Amar Koe, Amar Ata Atmi Homporko Asse. I would like to also welcome another resource person from uh, in, uh, uh, Assam University, Difu campus, Dr. Indu Swami. And as we all know, Indian writings in English gained credibility and acceptance largely due to the efforts of the towering figures like Mulklars, Mulklars Anand, uh, R.K. Narayanan, and uh, Raza Rao. And following their footsteps, a whole new range of Indian women writers like uh, Nayantara Sehgal, Kamla Das, Kamla Markandeya, Sashi Despande, Bharti Mukherjee, Arundhati Roy, Zumpa Lahiri, and many others have come up to occupy the literary area, literary space. These writers have expanded their vision, are not satisfied only with the, uh, uh, only with the gender related issues. Today, we find their writings in issues like uh, various humanity, uh, contemporary, uh, con contemporary humanitarian issues like uh, environment, energy, equality, justice, uh, human rights, peace, racism, violence, fundamentalism, and so on. And along with these women writers, we have various women writers from the Northeast also, like uh, Temsula Au, Iskarain Kire, Mitra Fukon, Mamangdai, like that. And some Dalit writers, Dalit women writers like Baby Haldar, Bama, Mina, Kandiswami, etc. have also uh, gain popularity and gain some space in the area of uh, uh, area as Indian women writers in English. So this type of webinar and other intellectual deliberations on contemporary Indian women writings, I hope will be a way forward to further strengthen the uh, uh, writings in this space. And in this connection, I would, uh, I, I, I would like to offer my sincere thanks to the Department of English for organizing such a webinar on contemporary issue or relevant, relevant issue, which would be beneficial for the students as, as well as for the teachers. And uh, at the same time, I would also like to uh, offer my sincere thanks to the entire team of the e-magazine, Rumination, that, that is to be released uh, by our resource person, Professor Anmona Bora, uh, formally. The, uh, that that uh, uh, this this would definitely uh, definitely uh, provide a platform for scholastic and non-scholastic uh, ideas and creative talents of the students. And I offer my sincere thanks to the entire team for their excellent ideas, hard work, and dedication in this regard. In this uh, uh, in this particular uh, uh, in publishing uh, publishing this e-magazine on the occasion, even during the period of pandemic. So again, I would like to uh, welcome you all to the seminar. I hope the deliberation that would be uh, that would be taken uh, that, 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 uh, in this webinar will definitely benefit the uh, the students as well as the teachers. Again, I would offer my sincere gratitude to the resource person, and uh, with these few words, I wish you all the best. And I declare this webinar is open. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. Thank you for often being supportive and encouraging us to conduct various activities of the department. Now we have the coordinator of IQSC, Gorgon College. I request Dr. Surajit Saikya to speak a few words for us. 
Dr. Surajit. Good morning to everyone. Uh, respected principal of Gorgang College, Dr. Sarbosasi Mohantasar. Today's resource person, Anmana Borabaido from JV College. Dr. Indu Swami, assistant professor uh, from Assam University. Faculty members of Department of English, head Department of English, Rasmirekha, Dr. Rasmirekha Sakyavaido. Participants from different parts of Assam as well as India and my student friends. So I'm uh, today I'm very happy that Department of English have chosen a very relevant and nice topic in present day context related to uh, contempt in present day context. So uh, thank you, uh, Rasmirekha Baidu, for choosing such a very uh, important topic. Uh, I hope that this type of topic will definitely have some impact in the uh, society. So far as contemporary writings in English is concerned, women writings in the contemporary world have tremendous impact in enriching the present generation. So the first novel writer, Toru Dot, to the prominent contemporary writer, Kamala Markande, has uh, raised different issues related to women, like issues, political and economic issues, East and West contact, uh, impact of liberal society, liberal economy on the uh, on different aspects of the women, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But from my point of view, different issues have till now different issues are raised, but till now different issues need to be raised because uh, I think that uh, so far as Kamala Markanda is concerned. See, uh, from different uh, um, uh, research papers, I can know that she has well attachment with the Nehru family so that she can raise the issues of social, social, social political issues very well. But uh, attachment and connectivity with issues is very important from the writings are concerned and their impact is concerned. So uh, from my point of view that uh, we need to raise more issues and for that we need to have more writers. But uh, yes, in uh, India, there are more female writers, women writers that raise the issue of women very well, but still we need to raise more issues. And that is why we need to create more writers. And for that, uh, I think uh, practice of creative writings from school level, from college level is very important. And Gorgon College is trying, uh, from, from the next session, we are trying to introduce some uh, courses, certificate courses in creative writings too. So this topic is very important. I am not so well aware about the contemporary writings of English, but I think that this topic will definitely have, uh, will bring some new issues, will bring some new hope in the coming days. So thank you, Vaido, giving me this opportunity to share my uh, words with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Saikya, for your insp inspiring words. We feel happy to announce that the Department of English, Gorga College, is going to launch our first e-magazine today. In this trying time, the major students of English Department of Gorga College have tried to make the best out of the pandemic through the lens of literature by carving out time to navigate their thoughts and creativity. Our students have established a joint venture in bringing out a literary e-magazine with their contributors. I now request our respected Anmona Bora Madam to release the e-magazine of our department. I thank you Dr. Rashmi Ekha for giving me this pleasant task of uh, inaugurating virtually uh, the first ever e-magazine uh, prepared by the Department of English, Gaugao College. Uh, so we know since last year, we have been going through a very difficult kind of situation caused by this pandemic. And in this new normal, which I would rather now like to call as the new order. In this new order, we have seen people engaging themselves in different creative activities. And I'm sure the efforts of the students of the Department of English, it is one such instance. So you have rightly named it as 
rumination. We know the meaning of rumination, that is the act of thinking carefully over something that for a long period of time. This is the result of your that thinking, that preparation with 47 articles and nine poems. Congratulations to all of you. And uh, the magazine secretaries in the preparation of this e-magazine, they are Richi Bora, Rutuja uh, Dekri, and Sukaina Duora. I take this opportunity of congratulating you two. Uh, continue your effort. This should not be the first and the last one. And I'm sure that you will continue with this. With this word, virtually, I declare the e-magazine as inaugurated. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, for your inspiring words. Thank you once again, Madam, for your encouraging words. My pleasure. Now it's time to start the main session. But prior to that, I would like to draw the attention of the participants that they can send their questions in the chat box, but that will be answered at the end of the session. Now, before we move on to the main session, it is my utmost pleasure and privilege to introduce before you our first speaker of the day, Mrs. Anmona Bora Mehta. Anmona Bora is the former vice principal of JB College, Jorhat, Assam. Prior to that, she served as the head and associate professor in the Department of English, JB College. She was actively involved in the corporate life of her workplace. In her capacity, she has attended and chaired many national and international seminars and workshops along with publishing a good number of articles and research papers in various journals and books. She has also worked as editorial member of many books as well as journals. In addition, she has edited two volumes of Siddhanta, The Conclusion, the Departmental Journal of English, JB College, Diaspora, and Gender. Mrs. Bora has also soldered the responsibility of being the teacher in search for the volume, JBN, which has baked the second prize in the magazine competition of the University. She was also the founder of JB College Women's Hill. Besides, she has represented the Inner Wheel District 324 as speaker and moderator in all India forums. From anchoring a large number of programs to being invited as motivational speaker on life skill, she is also the author of one grammar book, grammar and composition book for the 12 level standards. Her area of research interests are gender studies, diaspora study, and translation studies. Oh, so it is. Professor Anmuna Bora will speak on trends in contemporary oh. Indian women's writing in English with special reference to poetry. A warm welcome to Anmuna Bora, Madam. I now request Madam to please share your screen and deliver your thought. Over to you, Madam. Thank you, Rashmi, once again. Uh, I think uh, I requested you to share, uh, share the screen. Are you going to do that on yes, my Yes, yes, madam. Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine, fine. Okay. I'm about to speak for 40 minutes or 45 minutes. Ma'am, you can take 40 minutes and 10 minutes 40. for uh, question and answer session. Uh, that will be at the end of both the lectures. Yes, ma'am. I suppose. Okay. Yes. Okay, then. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a virtual good day to all present here. Esteemed principal of 
Gorgao College, Dr. Sabbasasi Mohanta, Coordinator of IQAC Gorgao College, Dr. Surjit Saikia, Head of the Department of English, Gorgao College, Dr. Rashmina Khasaikia, all the participants from different corners, and the another invited speaker, Dr. Indu Swami. Today, I am supposed to speak on the trends in contemporary Indian women writing in English. Here, I have decided to focus uh, on poetry particularly, because from Rashmi, I have come to know that Dr. Indu Swami is going to take up novels. That is why uh, in order to keep the trend, I have picked up poetry. And uh, first of all, let me make one point clear uh, that this talk will be basically and primarily for the students, the student community, because the poet, the modern poet writing in English that I have picked up, it is included in the CBSC syllabus under De Brugger University for the students, which is why I feel uh, that it is for their benefit uh, I'm going to speak. And when we talk about trends, the broad theme of this seminar, the trends in contemporary Indian women's writing in English. So Indian women's writing, what is so specific what is so special about that, that we have to mention it separately. You know, the question of trend will come there. For every trend, there must be a history. Whatever is the trend today will become part of history in the coming future. That way, Indian women's writing, it also has a history. And the principal of Gorgao College has actually set the trend of the webinar with his welcome address. He has mentioned how did it develop, how we have come through the different stages, how there are different trends over the period of time, because when we use the word contemporary, I still remember in the year 2018, one webinar, no, one seminar that was physical. It was organized by the Go Department of English, Gaugaon College again. There also Indu Swami was there, I was invited. And there, Dr. Midul Bordoloi from Dibrugar University, he mentioned, that when we speak of contemporary, from when? What is the time set? From when we should take it as contemporary? Yeah. Yes. I was muted. <laughs> okay, no problem. Uh, so I still remember Dr. Midul Bardoloi referring to the word contemporary, that from when we should take it as contemporary. Here, the broad assumption is after independence. From that point, before that women education, it went through uh, a large number of processes. We know the position of women in society. There was lack of education. There was the question of early marriage. Uh, they had to nurture more children. They were confined within the walls of domesticity. There was the gender construct. And for all these, all these Indian women's writing, it could not get the momentum as desired. But gradually the scenario changed. And now we have Indian women writing in English. But here 
again, I would like to uh, point out another thing uh, that is um, when we compare the different genres like uh, poetry, novels, short stories, drama, etc. There also you will find that Indian women writing in the area of novels that has uh, exhibited a good progress. But coming to the question of uh, poetry, you will find that there are not much of uh, Indian women writing in English, so far as poetry is concerned. That is why you see, um, we have along with uh, Kamala Das, we have very few, maybe 30 or something like that, very few women poets writing in contemporary India. And that too, most of them have uh, at best one volume to their credit. And on those women poets, we have not have much of a study. We know Kamla Das, we know Manika Varma. So to name a few. Then here I would like to mention, before going to the contemporary world and the trends, uh, the question is, who was, I have here in the slide, I have mentioned about the novelist, but the question is, who was the first Indian poet to write in English? Your IQSC coordinator, uh, he has mentioned her name, even the principal also, Taru Dutt. And if you consider uh, the themes of her poetry, she was talking about the loneliness. She was talking about the nature, but as such, we cannot attach a trend to her. She wrote, she wrote in English. She was familiar with the French language also, but uh, as for her poetry, she passed away very early, only at the age of 21. Whatever she produced, uh, we have to take into account that. So another poet before this contemporary period, she was Sarojini Naidu. So these two, I'd like to particularly mention. Then what happened actually? The history of Indian women writing in English, as I have already mentioned, it has come through st several stages to reach this contemporary one. And in these several stages, the glass ceilings, they had to be broken. What is the glass ceiling? The barriers. What are the barriers? I have mentioned some of them. And particularly, these barriers are based on the patriarchal setup of society. You know, Indian society is patriarchal, bearing a few. In some places, we have the matrilineal society where the uh, mother side is the main thing. And, but the efforts of several generations of Indian women writers writing in English, they had to work very hard to reach at this stage. Traditionally speaking, the work of Indian women writers that has been undervalued. Why? Again, comes the question of the patriarchal assumptions. What is that assumption? The assumption is the superiority of male experience. That is why you know what happened at the initial stage. Most of the Indian women writers wrote about their enclosed domestic space. On the basis of their 
experience within that domestic space because women were supposed to be confined to the four walls of the house that is why their experience was limited here i would like to mention not an english writer but a bengali writer asha punna devi what she did she never had any formal education she never stepped out to the outside world but with her domestic experience she has written so many beautiful novels in bengali so uh coming back to the english literature written by indian women writers as i have mentioned compared to novels indian poetry in english by women writers that has a slow pace and same is the case of drama to throw light on the trends in contemporary indian women's writing uh we have to uh take into consideration one statement by a famous novelist shashi despande uh she has spoken about modernity and tradition her view point is based on the thing that whether modernity and tradition they are two polarities to distinct positions are they opposed to each other or are they two phases of the same coin i would like to quote her here she has observed quote life is a continuous play of two things a desire for change as well as the need for the known and the familiar unquote so from this viewpoint whatever is trend today will become the part of tradition tomorrow and therefore we have to maintain a balance between tradition and modernity and that way i feel uh we'd be able to dive deep into this question of trends in the contemporary indian women writers so in the present century indian women writing in english has witnessed a considerable change why here comes the point i'd like to mention the writings they have started interrogating and analyzing gender roles when we talk of gender roles it has many facets like as mentioned by the honorable principal it can include not only the gender construct it includes the question of eco feminism it includes the question of human rights and this question of identity it works on a double level what are they they are the identity as a woman and as well as the identity as a human being no doubt as a woman she must have her identity as a human being also from this the lives of women their positions in society their perspectives their representation they have become the areas of concern and this is leading to the question of the female identity so we can say that the first trend exhibited by the contemporary women writers that is the quest for identity and while seeking identity as a human being naturally the question of human rights 
also come. As such, one major trend for the modern Indian women poets writing in English is that they have expressed this identity crisis through their writings. And in doing so, they deviate from the traditional concept of Indian womenhood. Traditional concept, I have already mentioned it, going back to that domestic sphere, no exposure, nothing, no education received, not available for the women. So this quest for identity is marked by a revolt against the conventional role of a woman in the society. So the recurrent trend we can say is that struggle for a new identity. In the contemporary Indian women's writing, social discrimination, male oppression, self-realization, and the consequent evolution of feminine consciousness, they are the recurrent themes. So we know when we have to live in a patriarchal society, this discrimination is bound to come up. The male oppression is there, but ultimately we have to find, we have to quest for an identity for ourselves. The women poets now they occupy a sizable space in modern Indian English literature. They have produced some outstanding works expressive of what Mary Elunka has called, quote unquote, the bitter service of womanhood. Yes, womanhood and the associated factors. That is one trend in the contemporary women's writer. In the post-independence period, the lives of Indian women, it has witnessed several changes and the quest for identity is a reflection for that change. So the Indian women poets writing in English, they evolved their identity as modern women. When I will be discussing particularly uh, one poem by Kamla Das, this will be uh, more clear uh, as to why I have uh, combined identity and the concept of modern omen. So these poets, they have encountered a variety of tensions which stimulate their progress from tradition to modernity. Here, I would like to quote Shashi Deshpande again. Quote, tradition and modernity are not warring against each other. On the contrary, they work together, creating a seamless and meaningful pattern of human life. So yes, although we are talking about trend, it is based on our gained experiences from the past. So writings by women, it has given a new dimension to the Indian literature. They have written in English and they have been exploring feminine subjectivity and that has become a major trend in the contemporary world. This trend is based on the fact that in the 20th century, women's writing has been considered a powerful medium of modernism and feminine, feminist statements. Yes, that feminist trend that has been so powerfully expressed by the novelists as well as by the poets. So not only in novels written by the contemporary Indian women writers in English, but in poetry as well, these writers have started dealing with themes that range from their childhood to their complete womanhood 
And in this quest for identity, they have explored the self, quote unquote, and relating that to the other women in the society. And this has also emerged as a trend. You will find that uh, they are expressing their personal experiences, but at the same time, it can easily be related to the other women also. So with this trend, definitely uh, they feel, they hope, they believe that society can be uh, changed and it can be made, made from a patriarchal one to a women-friendly one where we enjoy equal rights, equal freedom, and equal identity also. So when we talk about women's writing, it is based on the notion that the experience of women has been historically shaped by their gender. Beyond that, they have to struggle. Naturally, the trends in contemporary Indian women writers writing in English would be on women-centric issues. Feminism and women empowerment, they have emerged as two major themes for these women writers. Here, as we say, this is the pink first. Pink, that means all that is related to women first, that means it should get the topmost priority. So at this point, I would like to take up Kamala Das to illustrate the trends depicted by Indian women writers in English. And my take on Kamala Das, it would be based on the following observations. Do we feel that when women writers speak, the voice, quote unquote, becomes more legitimate and more authentic. It is difficult to define contemporary what to embrace and what to leave. How far can we stretch the term contemporary? And is it not possible for the male writers to speak about women? Or it is only the women who will be speaking for themselves. So what should be the, uh, what should be the stand? Before coming to Kamala Das, that's why I'm keeping uh, slide number 18 at whole. And before coming to Kamala Das, uh, let me mention some other areas in this contemporary world where we can speak about the trend and extensive study that is required within this limited space of time, it won't be possible, uh, but I feel extensive study is required in these areas. The concern for ecology, presentness of the past. This will again embrace that tradition and modernity. Problem of location. Here the question of diaspora, it will come in. The Dalit question. Some studies have been made, but we need more in-depth study in all these areas. The idea of nation. Then I feel that the translation of regional literature into English. That is one very, very important area because you know it is not possible for everyone to know all the languages, but as there are many contemporary Indian writers who have been doing tremendous work and commendable works in the regional language, I feel that is why we should go for translation, particularly if we speak about the Northeast. We have writers writing in English, like 
already mentioned, Mamang Dai is there. So Temsula Ao is there. But, but there are other women writers also in translation, I feel that will be a great contribution to the contemporary literature. And that way in the CBSC course also, um, there is the need for this adaptation that Northeast literature should be included. Here I draw the attention of the concerned authorities for that. So that would again give us one scope to learn literature from our own area. So that is also possible. And coming back to the contemporary scenario, this literature, it has proved to be a powerful tool for the women writers to represent the changing socio-cultural scenario. So literature in this scenario has become experimental and self-conscious. Therefore, uh, let me go back to Kamla Das and let us see why I have called her uh, the representative poet of this contemporary Indian women writing in English. And she has been uh, writing primarily poetry. And let us see with one illustration, because I have to keep in mind the time frame also. One illustration, let us see why I have said that she has broken to some extent the glass ceiling. That is why I would like to call her the iconoclast poet. She has said many are trends. Why iconoclast? Who is an iconoclast? One who breaks the already set rules. So Kamla does through her writings, she has proved that she is there as a new woman. She is there as a modern woman. She is there to broke, break rules. She is there to question the patriarchal society. And she is there among the contemporary Indian English writers writing in English as a very, very strong voice. I'm not going into detail about her biography that's available in any history book. I'd like to mention that her first book of poetry that was Summer in Calcutta, that was published in the year 1965. And if we are talking about the dominant trends in her poetry, what are they? She has a confessional mood in her poetry. Her poetry is autobiographical in nature. And according to Kamla Das, quote unquote, womanhood involves certain collective experiences. Yes, that is why I have already said that it is from me to the others. What I feel as a writer, that should be transmitted to all the other women. And therefore, when we talk about Kamla Das, I have seen at one point of time, I used to teach this poem also to my students. I have seen that in the CBSC syllabus, there is, there are in fact two poems uh, by Kamla Das included. And one poem is an introduction, a very, very powerful poem. All the trends, actually they can be illustrated with the help of this poem. What are the themes here? That is feminism, you will find. The question of equal rights, you will find. The question of freedom, you will find. 
the question of identity you will find where she can say confidently that she would like to stick to that identity she would like to maintain that identity so here the tagline can be quote unquote down with patriarchy yes in order to find your own identity you have to do away with patriarchy but remember she was married at the age of 16 early marriage and the struggle with her identity and she is finally able to step away from the traditional role of a wife in the poem very very frank very very strong you will find her speaking about the female parts of her body and she is of the opinion that her female parts are actually causing a crushing kind of weight on her and this is what this is the categorization of women and you will find that in the patriarchal setup actually many problems they stem up from this categorization be it in the economic field be it in the domestic sphere be it in the political sphere everywhere this categorization it plays uh, a role of havoc actually how to break away from this that is her attempt and that is beautifully expressed in this poem so you see when we talk about this categorization what are they you have to be a woman you have to behave like a woman you have to uh, act like a woman be a good girl be a good mother be a good wife all these are what all these are actually roles they are assigned to us here i would like to quote here i would like to quote m k nay i attempt to explain the feminist voice through th some of her poems in which mrs das has projected a new device to elaborate the women from the bondage of slavery in male dominated society unquote so her poem an introduction it reveals a gender bias and the poet's assertion in favor of a life lived on one's own terms we know about uh, that room of one's own we need that we need that that can be a very very major uh, that can be a very very major theme actually sarees are there bangles are there for kamla das as part of this categorization actually these are the signs of conventions and they push back women to the assigned gender roles let me quote from her poem dress in sarees be girl be wife they say who are this they they means that patriarchal society represented by the male be embroiderer be cook be a quarreler with servants fit in oh belong cried the categorizers yes that is the gender role how to come up out how to come out of that she is concerned with her womanliness and the typical role of a woman therefore she says quote it is time to choose a name a role and for that we don't have to play 
pretending games. Therefore, try to find out a name for yourself. Try to find out an identity for yourself. Where you can say, as she has mentioned in the final statement, that I to call myself I. That I, I is the identity. And Kamala Das is trapped between her own need for free life and in the world, which tries to keep her contained. So when we are talking about the trend, definitely this will come up. What is that? To find an identity for yourself, to create a space for yourself, and in that world, which would be equal to both men and women. And this quest for identity that has uh, proved as a major trend for the Indian women writers writing in English. And therefore, I feel that um, trends will come and trends will go. But the point is that uh, we are to remain concerned about the issues of women and the unequal treatments in terms of decision making, in terms of livelihood, and these issues are to be taken up, and the experience that has to be transformed, that has to be transmitted, the social construct, the gender differences, I'm not talking about sex here. We all know the difference between sex, which is natural, and the gender, which is a constructed one. So we are to remove these differences caused by uh, this gender construct. And in conclusion, I would like to state that in the last few, two decades, there are trends of self-assertion and identity taking place in Indian writing in English by women. That's a good sign. And I'm sure that more and more women writers, they will come up with their own issues. And definitely we, uh, we will find a society where gender equity will prevail. So the emerging trend in the contemporary world, that is finding, quote unquote, a room of one's own. The contemporary women writers are constantly in search of this new identity, new role, and a new language about the self. Joseph Kanraz has said, quote unquote, being a woman is a terribly difficult task since it consists principally in dealing with men, unquote. But yes, we are going to deal with the counterpart also when we are talking about a gender equitable society. Here, men and women both working together, both hand in hand, they can create it definitely. So in this world, which we have been referring to as the male dominated one, the women writers with the setting of different trends, they can definitely create an identity for themselves. Writing is really a way of thinking about things that are disparate, unresolved and problematic. Unquote. So, as I have already said, when we talk about trend, trend is everywhere, be it in literature, be it in, in the world of fashion, be it now we are accustomed with that, the trending news. So trend is everywhere, but trend cannot be a static area. It keeps on changing and 
with the hope that the change will be for a better tomorrow. Let me conclude. And at this point, I would like to thank the organizers of this national webinar uh, for inviting me as the resource person uh, to speak on a particular topic. But as uh, I'd like to mention again, that there are more areas to be explored. Uh, and definitely works will be done on them. They, there are works, but not extensive ones. Um, let us work together. And again, with a huge thanks to everyone, I'd like to conclude here. Thank you, Madam, for your thought-provoking address. It was indeed a very fascinating lecture. Thank you for enriching us with a very informative and interesting speech. We have thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I think we have received a lot of questions in our chat box. Uh, now let us move on to the question answer session. I request uh, Dr. Anjan Kaur to please forward the question to our resource person. Thank you, Dr. madam. Dr. Hello. Uh, thank you, madam. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anmana Barabaju, for your invigorating lecture. Uh, we have had uh, three questions so far. Uh, I'd like you uh, like to read out the questions uh, one by one. Uh, the first question is from Lutuja Devri. Uh, she asks, uh, could you please explain us about the use of trends in poetry by citing example of any other writer of both male and female author? Uh, should I take up uh, uh, one by one or I can answer this now? Uh, uh, you may answer this uh, now so that uh, after that. Uh, oh, okay, fine, fine. Uh, thank you, Rutuja, for your question. Uh, so that's why I have said that more and more uh, experiments and uh, explorations are to be made. Uh, apart from Kamla Das, I have uh, mentioned about Monika Varma. Uh, you can read uh, her poems. And uh, in fact, uh, if you read uh, Tarudatta and Sarojini Raidu, uh, there also you will get some kind of idea. Because you saw, uh, see, initially when uh, Tarudat was uh, writing about uh, some Skylars and all, uh, then she was advised that come to your natural scenario. What you see in your place, that should be uh, the subject matter of your poetry. So there are uh, numerous examples, uh, not only in poetry, but in novel also, where you will find that uh, different uh, poets or different novelists, they are speaking about uh, this gender identity, uh, maybe sometimes ecology also. So that way, uh, within this limited space of time, it is not possible to refer to all of them. Definitely, you can get in touch with me. I'll give you some ideas. Thank you, madam. Uh, I hope Rutuza is uh, satisfied with the answer. Uh, we would like to move on to the second question, which is from Supenna Dwara. She asks, do you think that uh, English literature from Northeast is yet to be explored at the national level? Yes, thank you, Sukarno, for your question. Definitely, this is a very pertinent kind of issue of which uh, we are talking about quite often. Uh, that because uh, we have always a feeling that what is the position of literature from Northeast India in the national scenario? Is there a cutoff? Are we in the mainstream? Or if not, how can we resolve this? Because not only in literature, uh, from your personal experience also, you will feel that, yes, there are 
uh, many kinds of wrong notions about Northeast in the pan-Indian scenario. We have to remove that and for that, I feel uh, literature can be a powerful medium. We have writers from Northeast writing in English, but apart from that, uh, that is why I have talked about the translation part. You know, at one point what happened, uh, let me give you just one example uh, from Ar Dr. Arupa Patangya Kalita's much celebrated novel, Felani. At one point in time, there was no translation for this. And whenever we uh, used to present a paper uh, in seminar, then what happened? The translation of the dialects that has to be done on your own. And when the translated version came up, the readerhood, it increased, it reached the national level. So that is why translation is very, very important. And uh, you see, Aruni Kashyap has said a very significant thing that we have to make ourselves hard. How? Through our voice. What is that voice? That is the voice of writing. Hardware in the national scenario. In the national scenario. So, yes, there are lots of areas to be explored still. Things are improving and we look forward uh, to a better kind of situation. Thank you, madam. Uh, we have uh, the third question from Mrinmoy Guswami. She asks, India being a diverse nation, do you not think it is difficult to have common or similar trends? Uh, thank you, Minoi, for your question. Uh, yes, uh, from our childhood days, we have been told that India is what? India is a land of diversity and there is diverse unity in diversity. So that's why you see uh, diversity will be there. And as for myself, I feel that I actually diversity makes literature strong. More the diversity, more you come to know about uh, one another, more you come to know about each other. So that way diversity will definitely add color. But at the same time, what is there? When we are talking about the trend, trend like uh, identity for oneself, trend like your concept of equity, trend like uh, ecological concern. So these are, there you see, there the diversity factor, it will be there, but at a minimal level, and we will be working on a broader perspective, broader perspective of trend in terms of all these factors I have mentioned. Okay, uh, we have a few more questions, ma'am. Uh, if uh, time permits, because we have okay. another speaker also. <laughs> yes, yes, we understand. Uh, I think uh, there's time for that. Uh, the uh, next question is from Deepraz Lahon. Uh, he asks, what is the barrier of Indian English literature? Mrinmoy, uh, uh, so you have talked about barriers of Indian English literature. So would you like to mean that Indian English literature written in English or in other languages as well? Uh, he uh, doesn't mention he anything. Mentioned, he hasn't mentioned. Uh, uh, yes, yes. So question. I'll uh, give, give one general answer then. Yes, okay. So yes. when you are talking about Indian writing, Indian English literature, so uh, initially, you see, there was the influence of the British, Anglo-Indian literature, that was the concept. But gradually, after independence, the situation, it has changed. 
and you see that is why here i would like to quote kamla das again she was devoured from speaking and learning english don't speak in english this is not your language don't learn is english that is this is not your in a language so this kind of dilemma and at one point of time you know learning english that definitely gave an advantage to certain section of people but when it comes to literature we should encourage all our rich literature of india be it in any language and here i would like to refer to two volumes to learn about the women writing in india but not necessarily in english they are women writing in india published by oxford two volumes are there volume 1 and 2 and they are edited by tharu and lalita so there you get the insight what is being done in kannada literature what is being done in telugu literature but 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 hindi literature also included but very pathetically i'd like to mention here that there is no mention of literature from northeast india that's why i repeat again get yourself visible in the national scenario so that we can also take part in indian writing thank you ma'am uh, we have a number of questions but uh, our coordinator has uh, informed that due to paucity of time uh, i think we should not have more questions for this session thank you okay. very much for your thank you anjan uh, we look forward to listen to you more Thank you. Thank you. It's my pleasure, and uh, I request the coordinator, if required, you can give my mail ID or contact number uh, to whoever wants to know more. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, madam, for elaborating so nicely. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. My pleasure. Now we move on to our next session. We have with us today. another esteemed guest speaker dr indu swami of assam university i now take this opportunity to introduce before you our next speaker dr indu swami dr indu swami is assistant professor in the department of english assam university gifu campus her area of interest includes indian writing in english with special focus on feminist literature and literature from north east india She has contributed 55 peer-reviewed research papers, authored 10 standard books, and more than 20 book chapters. Her latest book was released in 2020 on native responses to the subaltern voices from Northeast India and beyond. She has guided nine PhD and eight MPhil scholars. She has been honored with the best teacher award from Assam University, Silchar, in 2016. and the associate associate ship award at indian institute of advanced study shimla she is also the recipient of prestigious tata fellowship in folklore from national folklore support center chennai she is an active member of various academic bodies and professional societies for the promotion of contemporary literature in english she is also editor associate editor and reviewer of many national and international journals <coughs> She is also delivering a lecture entitled "Women Writers' Contribution to Indian Writing in English." I now request Dr. Indu Swami, Madam, to kindly deliver your talk. Over to you, Madam. Thank you, uh, Dr. Rashmi, for the nice introduction. Honorable uh, Principal of the Gargaon College, Dr. Sabya Sachi Mahanta, Coordinator of this webinar and Head of the Department, Dr. Rashmi Rekha Sekia. co-coordinator members of the organizing committee my fellow speaker mrs anmona bora retired vice principal jb college johrat faculty members dear students and other participants across the country 
A very good afternoon to all of you present over here in this virtual platform. It's indeed a great pleasure for me to deliver a lecture on women writers' contribution in Indian writing in English and interact with you all. At the outset, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the organizing team for inviting me, especially Dr. Rashmi and the principal of the college, doc, principal of the college. Dr. Rashmi is very active and uh, involved in many academic events. I appreciate and congratulate her for painstaking efforts in organizing this event. So uh, without taking much time, I would like to begin my lecture. The title of my lecture as told by Dr. Rashmi, it is on uh, women writers contribution to Indian writing in English. As uh, we all are students of literature, we know that Indian English literature also referred to as Indian writing in English is the body of work by writers from India who write in English language and whose native or co-native language could be one of the numerous languages of India. The distinct quality of this literature rests on multilingual, multicultural and multiracial ethos of the people living here. The intercourse of this literature with other Indian languages, dialects and literature on the one hand and Western cultures, literatures, traditions and aesthetics on the other hand enriches its treasure immensely. Now the question arises here, why women's writing is emerged as a separate entity in Indian writing in English? What is the need of this separate branch? So to understand the emergence of women's literature as a separate branch, first, we have to explore the tradition of women's writing. So our next concern is here, what is women's writing exactly is? I know that uh, as the students of literature, we all are aware of this thing, but in once uh, you can see in one sentence, I think I can define it. So women's literature has often been defined as a category of writing done by women, very simple, writing done by women. Though obviously this is true, many scholars find such a definition reductive also. So what makes the history of women writing so interesting is that in many ways it is a new area of study the tradition of women writing has been much ignored due to the inferior position women have held in male dominated societies the onus of women's literature then is to categorize and create an area of study for a group of people marginalized by history and to explore their writings, their lives as they were while occupying such a unique socio-political space within their culture. So this particular group, which is I'm talking here about the marginalized group, these are the group, the marginalized group, it is the group of the women writers. So because of this, it was important to reflect the experience, experiences of women in literature under the patriarchal influences to the forefront and expose the undue cruelty beheld on them by men. So it was necessary for the women to oppose this male domination over them. However, the earlier Indian women writers tried to stamp their authority in a male dominated environment as best as it was possible to them. Of course, it was a very difficult path as the women had to break through years of male dominance, taboos and beliefs that had heavily impregnated the society. In addition to that, critics argued that colonialism operated very differently for women and for men. This was so because uh, women were subjected to both general discrimination as colonial subjects and 
specific discrimination as women addressed as double colonization they are doubly marginalized okay so gradually women understand that they are having equal rights and opportunities with men as human beings so they have never been taken seriously in the patriarchal social construction even in the area of literature so as a result growing number of women writers in their works began to project the plight of women now coming to the representation of women in indian writing in english it is worth mentioning that the introduction of western education as um, mrs anmuna madam also very rightly she has pointed out this very this very point but here again i am just brushing it again so um, it is worth mentioning here that the introduction of western education along with positive aspects of colonialism in india ushered a new spark of hope for the women writers of india english education was introduced to india in the in the 19th century we all know so serving as an ideological force behind social reform and control this uh, english education it act as a you can say force behind social reform many social reforms were uh, taken in that particular period so i'll not go through it, uh, in detail about those social reforms we all know as the student of literature the reforms done by raja ram mohan rai mahatma gandhi many reform uh, reformists were there in that particular period so indian english literature has developed over a period of time and writing in english did not start today it took many years and several prominent personalities are helpful to bring the present status and distinct place to indian english literature among world literature literacy spread rapidly and women began to utilize the power of the pen with the passage of time indian english literature by women has witnessed several changes in the writing pattern so the conflict between two opposite sexes has been going on from the primitive period to the present times it is not a new thing okay this uh, conflict between the two opposite sexes between male and female okay so women's writing in india is about 2600 years old but it is really started with women questioning the images of women presented by male writers and seeking to combat them through their writing and bringing in a more humane and cultured way of conduct and behavior it means women women writers or you can say the questions of uh, women's identity or their problems they were presented by the male authors from their perspective so that perspective was totally different so before women emerged as a major literary force women created sorry men created women in their perspective prescribing norms for women to follow and uh, displayed you can say uh, patriarchy that insisted on preserving sexual inequality between men and women women's writing emerges in shape by creating new opening for female novelists and writers to bring female literary tradition it was the time that the literary world accepted women writers as writers of for and by humanity rather than pigeon hole them into separate category as though their writing were only about women and concerned with expressing their angst distress concern and anger at their plight but now uh, women writers have expanded their visions wider and they have taken issues uh, facing present uh, humanity uh, the facing present problems such as environmental issues okay equality justice human rights peace your racism violence fundamentalism religious issues also okay so these issues are uh, you can say uh, issues related with all the human beings so all these were bound to affect the trends of indian literature women writers in india can no longer be claimed as the exclusive property of india only but their talent and art belongs to the whole universe it is a matter of great pride that indian women's fiction has come into its own 
and is recognized as literature with a substance. Over the past few decades, women have contributed significantly to life and literature by interrogating and exploring their own lives that, and that of other women. The image of women in fiction has undergone a change during the last few decades. Women writers have moved from the uh, traditional portrayals of enduring, self-sacrificing women towards conflicted female characters searching for identity. Okay, so no longer characterized in terms of their victims, uh, victim status, rather they assert themselves challenge marriage and even motherhood. So uh, India has a rich tradition of fine women writers and some of the earliest established names among them were, as you all know, uh, Torudat, Savitri Bai, Jyoti Rao Phule, Pandita Ramabai Saraswati and many more. So here I will not discuss about all these writers in detail. In fact, it is not possible to discuss about all women writers and their writings in one lecture. So um, at least I have attempted my best uh, to, uh, to throw light on at least some representative writers uh, from the tradition of, uh, or you can say from the history of women's writing. But again, to talk about their texts in detail, it will not be possible in this lecture. So uh, we all are aware that uh, Cornelia Sar uh, Swarabji was uh, both the first woman to read law at Oxford and the first Indian national to study at a British university. So during her career as the first female lawyer in India, she advocated for women in Parda and children. And she wrote a dozen books including her memoirs, India Calling, which was uh, published in 1934. So Sarojini Naido, as uh, you know, uh, she is known as the Nightingale of India, was not only a poet, but also the first female governor of an Indian state and the first woman president of the National Congress. Her debut collection of poetry, The Golden Threshold, it was published in 1905, before independence. Now, uh, another very prominent writer from Bengal, uh, Rokia Shekhawat Hussain. She was a leading Bengali feminist writer and uh, her science fiction utopian novella, uh, Sultana's Dream, published in 1905. And it was uh, this particular text, Sultana's Dream, it was decades before her time because in that text she used to talk about uh, scientific things. So it is a delight to read even now. It means she is uh, this uh, Hussein. She was uh, very, you can say, uh, advanced in that particular period also. So unlike the above mentioned women writers, uh, I mean the 19th century writers before independence, uh, who first began writing about domesticity, the 20th century writers like uh, Nainthara Sehgal, Anita Desai, Shashi Despande, Kamala Markandya, Kamala Das. Okay, Anita Nair, Rama Mehta, Chitra Panerji, Bharati Mukherjee, Suniti Nam Joshi, Indira Goswami, Ruth Pawar Jabuwala, Manju Kapoor, Shobha Day, Meena Alexandra, Arundhati Roy, Kiran Desai, Jhumpa Lehri, and there are so many names. I cannot utter even the names of all those uh, prominent writers. Okay, have directly plunged into the world of politics, social problems the problems of East-West encounter and the dimensions of men-women relationship with confidence, sincerity, courage, and with remarkable felicity of language. So these Indian women writers have uh, distinguished themselves by boldly, uh, you can say boldly representing the true status of women in Indian scenario. These writers had gone beyond mere legal reforms to end discrimination. They were working towards the emancipation of women. So the voice of uh, these Indian women writers uh, through their writings uh, published in between 1980s and 1990s has, you can say, ushered in a literary renaissance is the third generation of Indian women writers. The names already I have uh, told you, like your Anita Desai, Nainthara Sahigal, Chitra Banerjee, Jhumpa Lehri, Okay, uh, Anuradha, Marwa, etc. So these are 
the foremost, you can say, third generation women novelists who hold centrality in the contemporary literary scenario. So they have made a distinct mark on the world literary scene with their rich cultural heritage and skilled language control. They have received national and international recognition, fabulous royalties and prestigious rewards also. In this regard, um, I would like to quote Nantara Sehgal. She herself uh, once told in an interview in 1982, I quote, I think we, we means here women writers, I think we are in a position to conquer English literature, unquote. And this is what precisely these novelists are trying to do in their own ways. Thus, they demand a serious critical attention, analysis, classification, and finally, definition as a distinct genre of fictional literature of their times. Contemporary women's fiction is a challenge to master narratives. It focuses on differences that make a difference to women in dominant masculine culture. It is also significant that women writers have not simply been confined to the private realm, but have moved beyond it. It provides insight, a wealth of understanding, reservoirs of meaning, and basis of discussion. The world is uh, being seen in a new dimension through the eyes of these contemporary women fiction writers. So today fiction by women writers contributes a major segment of the contemporary Indian writing in English as a whole. So a uh, little bit discussion about these uh, some uh, prominent uh, novelists. I'll not go in detail. So uh, I'll, I'll take them together, not uh, as uh, separate writers. Um, trapped in a socio-cultural milieu, women suffer inwardly in the novels of Anita Desai, Shachi Deshpande, Manju Kapoor, and other writers also. So marriage is the, you can say, a uh, very, you can say, very uh, pertinent uh, theme for all these writers. So marriages fail due to lack of understanding between men and women. Okay, so like this, your Chitra Banerjee in The Mistress of Spices, published 1997, uses uh, magic realism in her novel. Suniti Nam Joshi stands out for her use of fantasy and surrealism. And uh, your Anuradha Marwa's idol, uh, picture of an inner novels deal with, you can say, various aspects of college life, such as your Mina Alexander's Lampali House, published in 1991. Rani Darkar's The Virgin Syndrome. Okay, so there are many Indian women writers based in USA, Canada, Britain, and other parts of the world. So these authors write about their situation in cross-cultural contexts, states of in-betweenness, the East-West confrontation, the strange love-hate relationships, the clash between tradition and modernity, cultural alienation and loss of identity faced by uh, immigrants. Okay, so um, um, are, these are some of the aspects that are presented with deep insight by writers like Kamala Markandya, Ruth Pawar Jabuwala, Anita Desai, okay, Jhumpa Lahiri, Meera Sayal, Anita Rao Badami, Suhana Baldevin, Chitra Banerjee, and Kiran Desai. So the theme of migration that leads to self-discovery with a negation to the tradition of the country where she, one, one belongs to is the recurrent theme among the migrant authors like your Bharti uh, Krinchar's uh, Shiva dancing, Amina Mir's Bombay Talki, Bharti Mukherjee's Jasmine, okay, being good examples. So Jhumpa Lahiri, Manju Kapoor, Kiran Desai and Roy, Arundhati Roy to have uh, written novels of magic realism social realism and regional fiction and benefited from the increasing attention that this fiction has received national and international awards too. So they have probed into human relationships since the present problem is closely concerned with mind and heart and the crusade is against 
age old established systems so in order to make the process of changes smooth and really meaningful women writers have taken upon themselves uh, this great task see the image of uh, women that we chiefly get in indian writing in english is an ambivalent one sometimes uh, she is presented as meek passive and obedient just like your sita or draupadi and sometimes a defying and rebellious and self assertive so women now are no longer controlled and regulated to gratify their sexual needs shobha de arundhati roy uma vasudev kamala das have dealt with such type of women protagonists in their writings very frankly so the above analysis of uh, women writers in indian writing in english suggests that uh, women writers have made rapid development in the field of literature they have touched the variety of subjects with great contribution in creating awareness for the modern women all over the world the selections of themes handled by these or handled by uh, them considering indian environment needs and appreciation they have boldly expressed the social inhibitions and cultural taboos laid down by the society so indian women writers play all the roles with decency decorum discipline and dedication for indian women however beginning with uh, kamala markandeya right up to now in the first decade of the new millennium so to say uh, we have witnessed a spurt of women writers who have shunned all inhibitions accepting bravely the challenge of projecting delineating analyzing and discussing the real status and factual roles of contemporary indian women see after this uh, uh, you know that uh, another uh, literary turning point came in 1984 uh, when indira gandhi was assassinated and uh, thousands of sikhs were massacred in retaliation so for the older generations this violence brought back memories of the 1947 partition of india young writers and social activists including your very famous name urvashi butalia Uh, began recording other uh, began recording uh, their stories so butalia uh, butalia eventually wrote a seminal book the name of the book other side of silence published in 2000 based on these oral histories as well as her own family's story of uh, moving to india from lahore now in pakistan so around the same time ritu menon and kamala basin's ground breaking uh, you know text borders and boundaries was published documenting women's experiences of partition about which until then it seemed a collective amnesia had existed in a 1984's violence and uh, revisiting of the past coincided uh, coincided with your maturation of uh, indian publishing uh, industry so in that year urvashi butalia and ritu menon set up the first independent women's publishing firm in india and indeed in in all of uh, you can say asia this is the first uh, uh, independent women's publishing house so kali for women we all know this uh, publishing house very famous publishing house for indian women okay so kali for women so uh, they looked at a range of literature from fiction to non fiction including reportage and oral histories okay so kali for women and its uh, founders subsequent projects your juban books uh, women unlimited have published many women writers in original english and in translation such as uh, the brilliant uh, short story and specific writer manjula padmabhan okay three virgins 2013 it was the publication date food and nature writer kam illustrator and delightful storyteller bulbul sharma eating women telling tales 2009 environmentalist uh, you know vandana shiva staying alive 1998 and numerous other writers historians and freedom fighters so along with independent publishers some more magazines were also on rise 
while uh, you can say multinational publishers like harper collins and penguin also began establishing offices in india meanwhile you can say a growing recognition that the work of women writers had sales potential meant for more opportunities for them to be published in 1992 your oxford university press india published an unprecedented memoir by a tamil uh, dalit catholic nun bama you know uh, she is a dalit and karuku is her famous text that proved to be a best seller soon an increasing body of women writers a representative of groups that have been mar uh, marginalized on the basis of sexuality language caste and religion began to be published so uh, these included here i would like to share some names uh, urmila pawar baby haldar prabha khetan kana devi vina mojumdar and tamil muslim poet salma whose memoir the hour past midnight which was published in 2009 was made into a documentary salma and screened at the sunday festival so uh, uh, such robust publishing by and for women have ensured that the contemporary generation of writers is far more confident of their voices ex experimenting with form as they explore wide range of issues so in particular these writers are exploring and interrogating the concept of the strong woman most of these uh, stories depict an ordinary woman negotiating her daily space thus uh, defining herself and by extension uh, leaving her feminism you can say whether she chooses to be acknowledge it or not so here your namita gokhale chitra banerji uh, balli kaur jashwal sachi kaur ritika kapoor are worth mentioning so adding to this conversation uh, there are many relevant writers now becoming available in uh, in translation also including your malika amar sekh and navanita dev sen there are so many writers uh, okay but uh, it is not possible to name them all so you know your uh, samita arni very famous uh, writer samita arni uh, she retells the mahabharata war saga from a woman's point of view uh, in your um, chitas ramayana 2011 and kr meera's multi layered novel hang woman which was published in 2014 is about a woman executioner who inherited the job from her father your meena kanda swami's um, autobiographical novel when i hit you and a portrait of the writer as a young woman which was published in 2017 reveals Uh, devastating and isolating violence in a marriage in the same uh, vein malika amar sekhs afor uh, afor said mentioned uh, i want to destroy myself a memoir explores the horror of living with a man who in his public life uh, spoke uh, out for the rights of the oppressed but uh, showed none of the, this humanity at home i hope i am audible yes rashmi Dr. Yes, Rashmi. Oh, okay. yes, ma'am. Please, uh, please. Oh, please let me know because sometimes yes. uh, there may be a network issue. Okay, yes, so, ma'am. You are audible. Okay, thank you so much. So, uh, women writers of the, the contemporary time enjoy much liberty and greater amount of freedom than their predecessors, and uh, these contemporary writers explore every area of our life. Their boldness, candidness, and confidence. has taken women's writing to new heights so uh, however the uh, contribution of women historians feminists and social activists critics and writers must be appreciated here because uh, they played significant role to pave the way to pave the path for the indian women writers of the present century of the 20th century so uh, uh after this um, now uh, i would like to focus on the women's writings in english from northeast indian um, northeast uh, region we all know uh, that the writing in english from northeast india is relatively new this uh, corpus of uh, writing is a recent thing in comparison to the literatures in english from other parts of india as mrs uh, 
and mona bora madam has also pointed out this very uh, fact okay that we have to be you can say we have to be visible in the broader spectrum of your um, writing in english okay so as a discourse of a uh, self expression it took shape <laughs> casually in the 80s and the 90s of the 20th century while uh, indian provincial uh, provincial uh, writing in english began in bengal much before independence so we all know that uh, the history of the north eastern region of india is one of marginalized and silenced narratives yeah, so history has a tendency to be biased in documenting the narratives of the powerful and ignoring the minority so this adage is Uh, potentially true in the case of northeast india for their literature even today the region is seen and represented as uh, residing on the margins the uh, northeast women writers uh, writing at present are the first generation of writers but in this uh, relatively short span of time it seems to attain a legitimate and powerful voice by articulating their senses and sentiments and focusing on some of the contemporary core issues so it is a distinctive voice in the realm of indian writing in english although a mention is not a, a proper mention is not you can say a proper acknowledgement is not given to our northeast writings okay now you can see works by some of these writers from this region have been included in the post graduate english syllabus in some indian universities like your nagaland university nehu delhi university and ignu also but does here the critical attention this corpus of writing that adds a new and varied dimension to the body of indian writing in english enlarging its existing domain and this is a question for all of us so we have to work all to you can say we have to be or there is a demand for a collaborative effort from the writers uh, or you can say from the um, writers uh, from northeast india to come in the forefront okay with their writings okay so uh, as we all know uh, this eight states of this region hugely differ from each other in tradition culture language and religion it is possible Uh, to locate some common grounds shared values and concerns of these writers we all know that issues like insurgency identity crisis search for roots your self assertion claim for a political space and also and uh, uh, an ecological concern in their writing unite them as a common uh, on a on a common platform so their writing manifests different aspects of the entire ecosystem of the region they celebrate the ecological glory of northeast with a uh, uh, with a keen ecological awareness although uh, ethnicity is their chief concern as they hail from various ethnic groups mountains valleys hills you know, okay myths legends tribal rites okay mystic as well as aesthetic sensibilities communal violence insurgency are also uh, we all know some of the dominant and recurring themes in their works so this uh, tradition of northeast women's writing in english is fairly new with most write, writings by women taking off only after the uh, advent of the british rule in the region and with the introduction of formal education so uh, however it is important to mention that uh, there are prolific fiction writing you can say writings dramas poems folk tales written by women in the regional tongues for instance your uh, manipur has a rich culture of theater female artists of the uh, sumang leela which are local theater groups perform on themes that are relevant in showing the problems uh, that women encounter another example here i would like to cite uh, is uh, is of the role of journals and periodicals in assam that encouraged women to publish poems uh, general articles and stories and thus creating the confidence in them to venture into the public sphere and voice out against the various modes of oppressive forces in their lives here an eminent literary figure uh, 
that deserves an uh, honorable mention when discussing the literary scene in the region uh, is the a very well known writer of this region indira goswami a regional language writer whose works were able to transcend regional barriers goswami is undoubtedly one of the uh, rare indian women writers uh, who dare to portray a woman's sexual need as a natural right she creates uh, women characters that are bold and in doing this uh, this uh, charted into a new territories in assamese literature and even in english literature two prominent literary figures in indian uh, fiction writing from assam are uh, mitra fukan and uh, jahanvi barua mizoram has uh, just entered into this world with a few publications whereas uh, in sikkim yisle doma is a, a recent entry into the arena of english fiction women writing fiction in english from manipur and tripura have yet to surface on the map although translations of works written by women have been going on from time to time from nagaland tensula ao strain kare kire are two prominent writers from the state we all know and their works have brought much attention to the region in general and in nagaland particularly so both of these writers are recipients of national awards and have been recognized for their contributions to literature from meghalaya anjum hasan and daisy hasan who are sisters have published novels that reveal outsiders uh, perspective as they do not ethnically originate from the state so they have written on themes about xenophobia in the region the existential angst of the youth and the treatment of north easterners in mainland india another writer with the uh, ties to the state is uh, bilender danwa there is also bijoya swens uh, writing a shadow man published in 2010 uh, which against the backdrop of communal violence in shillong explores the issues that crop up in the uh, matriarchal khasi society her most uh, recent publication has been uh, a collection of short stories uh, called a family secret and other stories which was published in 2014 another writer in english uh, from this region is mamang dai who is from arunachal pradesh and she is a former civil servant and recipient of the padma shri uh, for her contribution to english literature and education uh, from mizoram mala swami jacob is the you can say is a, a first generation english writer whose famous novel zorami published in 2014 deals with the insurgency movement that had affected the state in the 1960s there are few uh, mentionable young women writers who are also contributing to the literary scene of the northeast india a notable uh, name is janis patriot whose debut book boats on land a collection of short stories published in 2014 won won the sahitya academy for the young writer award in english language other young women authors and their works of fiction are your avinuo kires the power to forgive and other stories which was published in 2015 and suzanne sangis facebook phantom published in 2013 and joe's journal 2014 so the writings of these uh, contemporary women writers bring to life a historical account of life in their societies they reflect the demarcated traditional roles for men and women offers their perspectives on kinships and friendships offers insight into ancient uh, tribal customs familial ties and the conflict that has become endemic to the region the the niche that women occupy in the region is brought to life through their narratives their sorrows aspirations struggles and life experiences are exposed and brought to the knowledge of the outside world their writings contribute to the greater arena of indian english fiction in general and women's writing in india by particular uh, by offering a unique perspective of female experience from a region then shrouded in mystery so by the simple act of writing their experiences these women writers of this uh, region have acquired the power to have a voice and thereby 
creating opportunities to speak out against the frequently silenced space of oppression that women inhabit in a man's world so this uh, contemporary writing in english from uh, india's northeast uh, will always be relevant and will remain of great significance in reinventing the northeast india as well as india as a whole so uh, here i would like to sum up my lecture so to sum up the things which i have discussed uh, today uh, i can say that the indian women writers have uh, significantly contributed to the overall world literature as equal with men writers the journey of women's writing has been a long one beginning with imitation of male writing followed by protest demanding equal opportunities and finally ending with the discovery of the self so women writing lay stress on persistent themes attitudes and images related with women across the globe that arise out of their social political economic and aesthetic experiences today uh, women writers have realized that language which over the years has been dominated by men can be equally used as a tool to voice their aspirations there is a need to document women's desires and objects realistically and to free themselves from the unbiased representation of women through the pen of men women writers have grasped and observed that to suppress women in this patriarchal society female characteristics and traits have been wrongly presented they reveal that apart from domestic chores women undergo many experiences in their daily life and are unjustified and violate human right there is a strain of protest and anger in women writing which have evolved due to the approach of the society towards women and because of um, women themselves internalizing the sense of victimization so women writing not just confine themselves with women's suffocated experiences but they also celebrate womanhood male sexuality their possessiveness and attitude are also vital part of women's writing as uh, uh, women experiences cannot be studied in isolation so women writers today challenge the traditional method of writing and rediscover a language that can give justice to feminine voice most appropriately they attempt to dismantle gender stereotypes rooted in myths and instead search for symbolic representation of their vision through language they want to give a subjective and realistic perspective of the life of women and her understanding of the people around her more accurately and vividly so um, it is important for us to look at women's writing not as a monolithic whole dealing with the question of self and identity much of indian women's writing in english uh, is focusing on the middle class woman and her uh, subsequent roles in an upwardly mobile society so these roles are well within the parameters of a family many indian women novelists have explored female subjectivity in order to establish an identity that is not imposed by a patriarchal society so uh, in my uh, concluding remarks uh, i would like to say that all these uh, contemporary indian women writers could compete with best in the world perhaps that best in their own right so it would be no exaggeration to say that the best english fiction in the world is being written by indian women writers or those of indian origin thank you so much and uh, thank you for your patient listening i am done so now it's over to you rashmi dr rashmi i have done thank you madam thank you for such an extremely eloquent and insightful lecture thank you so much for enriching us with a very informative and interesting speech it was a pleasure listening to you today 
We are really enlightened with, with your words and knowledge. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think we have lots of questions in the chat box. I request yes, yes. Dr. Anjan Kaur to please forward the question to our resource person. Dr. Anjan Kaur. Thank you, Dr. Rasmussen. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Indu Swami, ma'am, for your fruitful presentation. We hope that uh, not only the students, the other participants have also been benefited by, by your lecture. Uh, you we so have much. a number of, a lot of questions uh, in both a Zoom chat box as well as YouTube chat box. Uh, I don't think that there will be enough time to address them all. But uh, however, I'd like to start with uh, a question uh, which has been put by uh, Usmrita Handikoy. She asks, it's a long question. I'll just read out it okay. for you. Uh, the present violence, harassment, rape victims, uh, wherein females are being faced, uh, are faced at, at an uncontrollable level, is one of the major topic for the country. Do you think more emergence of female writers on this topic can give positive views in the minds of the people? How could, there's another part, how could we females stand against major problems. Uh, I hope you have got the sense of the questions uh, put by Ms. Usmrita Handikoy. Usmita. Usmrita, yes ma'am. Oh yeah, Usmita. I think uh, she want to ask me regarding the uh, recent atrocities uh, which were, uh, I think, uh, done towards women, like your recent uh, rape cases and uh, many other atrocities I think she has addressed. Yes, I think uh, it is the urgent need of the hour because as I told you, this writing, this writing, basically it, it gave a kind of a voice to the women, okay, through the writings of these women writers. So I think when we used to talk about this trend, so these are, I think, the, uh, the recent trends, which I think we have to, um, we have to engage ourselves, at least the the modern writers i think we can we can uh, keep aside the already i think addressed notions already already addressed issues by our um, you can say senior writers so the modern writers uh, i think definitely uh, they can take up these issues and uh, um, if we used to and if we used to write on these particular issues i think we can at least we can um, we can make the society aware of all these uh, things Okay, and um, as I told you, um, uh, these women writers, they are not uh, uh, basically writing for the upliftment of women, but they want to work towards the upliftment of the whole society, all of, of all the humanity. So these are, I think, humanitarian grounds on which we used to work. Yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Uh, there's another question uh, from Hiron Moy Goswami. He asks, ma'am, can you please point out the conditions that help the women writers to come out and establish themselves in the patriarchal society? I'm not getting your question. Please repeat the question uh, again. Okay, okay ma'am. Uh, he asks, ma'am, can you please point out the conditions that help the women writers to come out and establish themselves in the patriarchal society. In the patriarchal society, how to come up? Okay, of okay. the hindrances from the patriarchal society. Okay, see, as I told you, writing is uh, is the best weapon. We cannot fight with each other. Okay, we, but we can. Uh, we can. You can say uh, pour our uh, views, our uh, issues, our uh, you can say our concerns to our counterparts, male counterparts through our writing so i think writing is the best option why we used to search another option as it is i think it is a long tradition of the women writers okay from the you can say from the first generation writer they this is the trend that through their writings okay they they want to uh, you can say they want to occupy uh, not a, you can say the or they want to they do not want to snatch the uh, you can say position but they want an equitable society they want an equal share in the society through their writings. Okay, so in the patriarchal setup, I think uh, writers, they can, um, they can project 
the women's reality, the women's, you can say, conditions, their problems from women's point of view. That's why I think this women's writing is very important because if a male writer used to project something, the you can say the perspective is totally different from, from his point of view, things are totally different. So this is the need, or this is the need uh, that we have to uh, include this women's writing uh, as a um, uh, separate entity in our syllabus because their perspective, their vision is totally different from that of men writers. Okay, so I think writing, uh, through their writings, uh, they can, uh, I think, um, address their issues from, uh, or, or they can, um, they can come out of this, uh, you can say, shackles of this patriarchal uh, bondage. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, one more question. A uh, few more are there. In fact, yes, a yes, lot of can, questions yes. are there. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. The next question is from uh, Kashyap Juti Buraguhai. Uh, he says, uh, can we consider the patriarchal setup of Indian society as an inspiration that motivates and helps the trends of Indian women writings to take its own shape? Yes, yes. I do agree with him. See, um, uh, if, uh, see, we used to resist when we have a kind of a, uh, you can say, uh, um, uh, you can say a counterparty. Okay, so this uh, male writing, this male tradition, uh, sometimes they act as an opportunity for the women's. Okay, because they, uh, these male writers, they have uh, not projected these uh, women's question in a, you can say in a very uh, proper way. So uh, when uh, these women writers, they, they, they used to, uh, uh, they used to, you can say, uh, say they used to uh, read the re reflections of their own problems by the, by the male writers. They can easily, you can say, compare their, their real life experiences and the experiences which were shared by the male writers. So at that point of time, time, they can take up the issue and they used to project that particular issue from their own perspective. So um, uh, I think the, what is the name of the, what is the name His of name the name? Is yes. Yes, Hiranmoy, your question is very pertinent. I do agree with you that sometimes this uh, male writing tradition uh, uh, it serves as an, you can say, uh, a backing force for women to project themselves. Uh, this That question was raised by Kashyap Juti. I'm sorry, it was not here on Okay, Kashyap, Kashyap Juti. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, okay. Kashyap Juti, yes. Okay. Yes, uh, yes. Another question is from Pramothes Deka. Uh, he actually put up this question in the previous session also, which is uh, not picked up. But, so he has raised the question once again. He asks, ma'am, uh, has there been appropriate study on treatment of men in the writings of women writers, be it Indian writers or writers from the outside? See, um, this question is also very pertinent. Uh, as uh, men, they used to, uh, men writers, they used to project uh, women. Women writers also, they used to project uh, males in their uh, writings. Okay, as I told you earlier also, these uh, female writers, they used to write for all the, uh, you can say, of all the people in general, not women, not, uh, not for a particular group. Okay, their concern is, is for the whole uh, society. Okay, so they are not against so um, uh, there is, um, I think there is no such uh, work has been done till now, but uh, I think these women writers, they have also projected the problems of the male totally ignored in their writings and they are totally focusing on the female characters because male and female uh, together they are um, working in the society or together they are doing uh, things. So in, uh, in uh, you can say in writings also, we cannot ignore the contribution of men. So these writers, they are not uh, projecting only women, but uh, I think they are uh, projecting, a, you can say a, a society where uh, both men and women can uh, live peacefully or they can, they can have a companion relationship. So along, um, I think this uh, uh, issue is related with women, 
these writers they are also i think uh, they are also uh, focusing on the issues uh, related to men also because when we used to talk about marriage marriage is uh, it, it is not like that only uh, women is there okay problems they they must be addressed uh, in you can say centrality the problem of men and women is one if we if we used to talk about marriage okay so naturally men is there okay uh another question from gorob juti gorpholia ma'am do you think women writers have to struggle a bit more than male writers pardon male uh, he he uh, gorob juti gorpholia asks ma'am do you think women writers have to struggle more than male writers yes 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 because <laughs> i think no no i think uh, uh, you can say elaboration is required in this regard only yes is sufficient hmm? <laughs> that's why that's why i think we have to uh, study the tradition of women's writing otherwise what is the use of study uh, what is the use of doing research on this particular area hmm? right so uh, one more question from uh, asha devi uh how far women writers are able to take a satisfying position in the world of english literature and how is their evaluation in this see as i as i uh, remarked in my concluding part also that today contemporary indian women writers uh, they are at par with the world literature okay and uh, they are you can say uh, they are uh, recognized not only in india but also in the international level also okay so um, i think uh, now the right time has come up that these writers they are coming with new new ideas new new themes okay so uh, now i think um, as uh, i um, as i told you that women writers they are emerging with new new ideas new new themes like your environmental issues ecological issues earlier they they used to talk about only domesticity about their own struggle but now they are coming um, or you can say now they are coming up uh, with new new ventures so definitely uh, these uh, contemporary indian women writers they are getting their due position now and uh, this is i think just the beginning okay we we cannot uh, say that this is the think uh, this is the this is the ultimate uh, aim that uh, the we the indian writers we we attained our you can say dream we attained our destination no this is just the beginning the beginning is is already you can say uh, started by the contemporary writers and we have to take up these issues and a uh, long way we have to work on these uh, areas okay thank you ma'am uh, i think uh, we should stop here uh, because you can of, uh, you can give my of... email id you can give okay. my email id if uh, some questions are still pending uh, yeah, they can send me more. their queries yes but due, yes. due to shortage of time uh, we are not yes, able to yes. pick them up yes yes okay uh, thank you once again for your responses uh, and thank i you now so hand over the session to dr rasmika hoykia Thank you, Dr. Anjan Kaur. Thank you, Madam, for elaborating so nicely. Now, as all good things come to a successful end, so is this webinar. I wholeheartedly thank all the participants, research scholars, and academicians, students who have shown keen interest in this webinar, and for participating. The same. Now it's time to offer the vote of thanks. I request Dr. Uh, Mrs. Samolima Saikia to please offer the vote of thanks. Samolima Saikia. Thank you, uh, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it is an honor and privilege to offer the vote of thanks on behalf of the organizing committee at the end of today's webinar on trends in contemporary Indian women's writing in English. At the outset. that i would like to offer our sincere thanks to our resource persons namely mrs anmona bora ma'am former hod department of english and retired vice principal jb college jorhat 
and to Dr. Indu Swami, ma'am, Assistant Professor, Department of English, Assam University, Diffu Campus, for their erudite and insightful talk on various aspects of contemporary Indian women's writing in English, ranging from the origin of women's writing uh, to issues like the barriers faced by women writers, male oppression, quest for self-identity, the evolution of feminine consciousness, uh, among others. Indeed, we are enlightened by the invaluable knowledge that you shared with us today. Uh, we believe uh, our participants have definitely been enriched by your resourceful lecture. Uh, next, I would like to extend our heartiest gratitude to Honorable Principal of our college, Dr. Haibhasi Mohantasar, for being present with us on this occasion despite his hectic schedule. We are immensely thankful for his encouragement and wise counsel in holding this event and also for the insightful thoughts on Indian women's writing in English with reference to Northeast India as well that he shared with us today. I would also like to offer heartiest thanks to Dr. Surajit Saikya, coordinator of IQLC Gorgao College for supporting this event and being present with us to share his thoughts on the relevance of women's writing keeping in view various socio-political contexts. Father, I extend heartfelt gratitude to all the participants, including faculty members from different institutions across the country, researchers and students who have participated in today's webinar. Truly, you all have made our webinar a success. Our program would not have been successful without the hard work and dedication of our technical coordinators, namely Dr. Pankaj Kumar Nath, sir, and Dr. Dimbeswar Das. I offer heartfelt thanks to them. We are also grateful to our college fraternity who have taken time out to participate in today's webinar. Next, I offer sincere thanks to Dr. Rasmi Rekha Sekia, ma'am, head of the Department of English, for taking the initiative to hold this webinar and trying her utmost best to coordinate the event in the best possible manner. Father, I extend sincere thanks to all the faculty members of the Department of English, Gorgam College, for extending their cooperation towards organizing this event in a fruitful manner. Finally, I offer special thanks to the students of our department for rendering all probable help in organizing this event and for their active participation in today's webinar. I also thank them for their hard work in bringing out the department to e-magazine. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.